So in terms of the blood supply to the ovaries, the arterial supply is via the ovarian arteries and the venous drainage is via the ovarian veins. So the ovarian arteries arise just below the level of the renal arteries on the abdominal aorta on either side. So remember the renal arteries lie at the vertebral level L1. So the ovarian arteries arise just below the renal arteries. And then in terms of the venous drainage, the left ovarian vein drains into the left renal vein, whereas on the right side of the body, the right ovarian vein drains into the inferior vena cava. So remember that these ovarian vessels actually pass to the superior pole of the ovary via the suspensory ligament or the infundibulo pelvic ligament. So moving on to the uterus, we're now looking at it from this lateral cross-sectional view. In the last tutorial I introduced you to the various parts of the uterus including the fundus, the body and the cervix and I mentioned that it had this flexion over the bladder which we can see here. But what I didn't introduce you to was the different axes of the uterus. So at the level of the internal os, you can see that the body of the uterus is angled forward at an angle of around 130 degrees. So the axis of the uterine body lies at a 125 degree angle to the axis of the cervix. And this degree of angulation is called anti-flexion. And then the degree of angulation you get with the axis of the cervix to the axis of the vagina is called antiversion. So normally this is around about 90 degrees of flexion. So it's not shown as sharply angulated in this model here. So you've got antiflexion, which is the axis of the uterine body to the cervix. And then you've got antiversion, which is the angle formed by the axis of the cervix to the axis of the vagina. So just coming over to one of my diagrams again, we're looking at a, a poorly drawn sagittal section of the pelvis. So anteriorly you've got the, the pubic symphysis and the pelvic bone and you've got the bladder in orange and the rectum posteriorly in brown. So just to illustrate some of the positions that the uterus can take. So the normal position is, if I just draw on the vagina here, and then you've got antiversion of the cervix in relation to the vagina and then you've got antiflexion of the uterine body. So that's the normal or most common position of the uterus. And then another position of the uterus can be to have the antiversion and retroflexion of the uterus. Or you can also get retroversion and antiflexion. Or you can get retroversion and retroflexion. So those are some possible positions of the uterus. So in terms of the blood supply of the uterus, it's supplied by the uterine artery. So if I just rotate the model slightly to the side, you can see this artery running along the length of the uterus. So this is the uterine artery and it arises usually from the anterior division of the internal iliac artery. And this artery actually runs in the base of the broad ligament. And if you remember that I mentioned before, the uterine artery crosses above the ureter. So remember that mnemonic water under the bridge to remember this anatomical relationship. So you can see the ureters running underneath the uterine artery to enter posteriorly into the bladder. So as it ascends along the uterus, it forms anastomoses with the ovarian arteries, which you can see above. And it also gives off descending branches, which supply the upper vagina and the cervix. 
So venous drainage of the uterus corresponds to the arteries. So these veins drain to the internal iliac veins. And there's communication between veins that come from the vagina and veins that come from the bladder as well via a venous plexus. So in terms of the arterial supply to the vagina, the arterial supply is from branches of the internal iliac artery. So you've got various branches, such as the vaginal branches, the uterine branches, which I mentioned. And then you've got the rectal branches, the middle rectal branches, and the internal branches of the internal pudendal artery, which supply the vagina. And venous drainage is via the venous plexuses, which drain into the internal iliac vein via the vaginal veins. So now you should have an understanding of the blood supply to the organs which make up the female reproductive system and also have an idea of the different axes and different positions that the uterus can take 